Hello teacups, what's brewing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. We're actually not doing, I know you can tell from where I am, I usually do makeup looks here. We're not doing anything special with makeup today. I just, uh, I wanna go and sit somewhere that's not my apartment. I'm going a little bit stir crazy, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on and um, it's the most convenient time to talk to you really, so that's where we are. <laughs> so you may be able to tell what is going on here. I'm gonna be wearing my red wig today because, um, <laughs> The fringe covers most of this. So I got my eyebrows microbladed. I've been meaning to do it again for a while. I had it done way back in, I want to say 2016, 2017. Um, but it only lasts like, it lasts between two and three years. Mine lasted about two, two and a half before it became um, quite faded and I had to start drawing them in again. But your mileage varies on that. Uh, I was talking, I mentioned this on my other channel and I was talking in the comments and I didn't realise if you have oily skin it can really shorten the life of this procedure. So if you're looking into it and you're interested in microbla uh, microblading, please just keep that in mind. I'm tripping over my words a bit because I'm still drinking my first cup of coffee of the day. <laughs> but yeah, I got them done. And um, then I waited a few weeks and then I went and had a touch-up session. And uh, that's what this is right here. So when you get it done, I had a version of microblading called, it's either Febrow or Fibrow, um, which is, it specializes in very realistic brows, which is what I'm looking for because I don't have them. So I really wanna, I want something that looks quite natural. So the lady topped these up, what she does, she takes like a really, really, um, sharp knife sounds wrong but the applicator they use to to etch it in and um she etches all this in and as she goes she covers it in the color in the dye i suppose it's dye yeah in the ink and um then she wipes it away and the part that she's scratched in keeps the color and that's kind of how it works so when you um when you finish that there are different ways to take care of it each brow artist has it their own way it can be wet or it can be dry she tends to go for dry so she was like no water on this for a few days and when that happens these darker areas they um my camera's yelling at me to move a bit further away sorry camera i need to zoom in uh this area here is where the top layer of skin that you um you etched into dries up it still holds the dye so it's darker it's a bit more prominent which is what you were seeing before now that doesn't last forever that skin starts to peel away and then it reveals what's underneath and that's what's happening that's why this looks so unfortunate this kind of leopard print version cheetah print on my eyebrows here and uh, when that goes away you actually have the color doesn't always show up very um, prominently like it tends to be very light and then to kind of rebloom. So there's always a moment when it comes off and you're like, oh God, it didn't work. I'd be so disappointed, but you just have to be patient with it. So I'm in the middle of that process right now <laughs> and um, it doesn't look the best, but I have a tendency because I have trichotillomania and I tend to also pluck my brows, which is why I don't have brows, why I'm having them microbladed anyway. Um, I have a tendency to pick and I've had to be so careful with it because the first session, um, some of it started coming off and then I, I touched it and I took off part that wasn't ready. So it was still a little bit red underneath. But that means if you do that, you can lose the colour underneath. So when she touched it up, she had to do a little bit of extra work. So I promised her faithfully, this time no. <laughs> she actually said after the first few days, put Vaseline on it um, so that I don't feel the need to, to itch at it. Because it does get a little bit itchy as it's healing. Um, I heard from my brother, because he has a big tattoo sleeve, uh, that it's not a great idea to have Vaseline on these kinds of things, because it can't breathe. I'm not sure. I'm sitting here going, do I want to take my brother's word over the technician who actually did this? But <laughs> there we go. Uh, but I do want to keep it moisturized. I don't want it to just dry out and to pick. So I've been putting, um, they have, what's the name of the brand? Vino, just just a moisturizer on it essentially so it's a bit more breathable but i'm less likely to touch it and then i woke up today and while i was sleeping this had happened so wonderful wonderful we're going through it but that's the process of this i've been talking about this for a while we'll move on i promise but i'm hoping 
once all this comes off naturally and the color reblooms then i'm going to be really happy with it because when she was done etching it in i was ecstatic i loved having my eyebrows microbladed last time it was just so much easier and uh, i really miss it and this is my last opportunity she's actually traveling in a week so this was really my last opportunity i think what i'm gonna do she said come and check in with me um so i can see how it's progressing i don't think she trusts me <laughs> and um i i said i would so on my way home today i might pop into the salon because it's right next to the gym it's very close and uh, see if she's there and she can just check in on it while i was chatting or just waiting for my moisturizer to settle in um i'm not putting on a huge amount of makeup today i've actually been doing just recently um because my skin isn't too bad it's not great at the moment i've got a few little things coming up because i was uh at a hormonal time of month uh about a week ago so my skin isn't great great at the minute but because it's so hot i haven't been wanting to wear full base so what I've actually been doing is just been putting a little bit of concealer under my eyes to help hide the bags. And then I've been, um, I've been just powdering my face and it's been okay. I don't really want to put, she said I can put makeup on this, but with it being like a skin issue, I don't really want to do that. I'll just live with it looking weird a bit. Um, so I'm not going to put anything on my brows and then probably just a little bit of mascara and some lip stuff. Actually, while I'm waiting, I might just put a little bit of lip balm. Oh no, <laughs> this is the, the terrible thing that I do every time. I've just put moisturizer and some face product on and just a little bit of, of, uh, primer because things tend to move, but then my hands are slippy and I can't actually open anything else. <laughs> I make the mistake every time. So I'm just going to put a little bit of lip balm on while I'm pulling the rest on because my lips are prone to be very, very dry. Oh, that's what I was saying about skin and microblading. Last time I was just saying that uh, if you have oily skin, it can really shorten the life of how long these last. Uh, I have normal to dry skin, so I tend to be okay. I tend to get two and a half years last time. We'll see how long this one lasts but uh because i'm more prone to dryness so they do tend to to stay a while so other than that not too much has been happening but i'm trying to keep myself on a healthy schedule i do have a tendency to um sleep all day and be up all night like someone else we could mention if i leave myself to my own devices but i know that that tends to lead to me really struggling mentally it's not a good feeling and that's actually why I'm going out today. I don't have anything particularly to do, but I'm just going to set my computer up in probably the restaurant and because uh, they have a little Starbucks counter there and have a coffee because I need to get out of the apartment. I'm going stir crazy. It's not healthy for me to be in here all the time. And usually this doesn't happen um, quite this quickly. I usually have a bit more time because I'm doing other things in my day. But in this case, uh, it's really hot outside. I'm not really leaving the house and before i used to go to the supermarket to get my food and then they closed down the supermarket so because they're changing over the brand and um, it's going to be about a month before it's opened so the day-to-day -day, i'll just pop to the shop and get whatever ingredient i'm missing i don't have um which is good for like my budgeting and my um budgeting planning really i'm really trying oh, i'll talk to you about that in a minute i'm gonna get off track but anyway, it means that I'm really not leaving the house as much and it's very hot. It's not like I can just go sit out in the garden because there's there's a lot outside. There's a lot outside. It's it's not really pleasant. So I'm just uh, trying to shake things up a little bit because I can feel myself turning. I can feel like I'm waking up later. I'm finding it more difficult to motivate myself to do things. And I'm not anywhere terrible yet, but these are the warning signs of, oh, this is coming. And so I try and heed them and I try and just check my habits and see what I'm slipping on. And uh, that's what I think is happening. So I'm going to just go outside for a little bit, <laughs> literally touch grass. <laughs> I did go out. I've been meaning to just um, hose down my patio. It's been really dusty and really dirty because everything clecks. And I've been meaning to do it for ages, but it's been so hot. Um, and I went out and did that yesterday. It still needs doing again because it was in quite a bad state. But 
that made me feel better to achieve something, you know? Um, other than that, I am currently still waiting on my school for my paperwork, which is driving me absolutely bonkers. So on my last day of school, I was meant to receive a pack. And in that pack, it was meant to have my reference letter, uh, my professional development certificates, and it was meant to have my final exit visa paper thing. Yeah. So my problem with the school a lot of the times is that they don't communicate things. So if they had said to me, hey, because you're leaving later, because I'm staying here for the summer, because you're leaving later, well, I'm going home briefly, but not for very long, then we're not going to process your paperwork until maybe a week or two before you leave. Then that would make sense. And I'd be a little worried about it because I don't necessarily trust them to organise themselves, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't just be so focused on it and so worried about it. And instead, they just said, no, everyone's will be ready on Sunday, which was the last day of work, which is when everything's supposed to be ready. And then my boss didn't get the thing. I think I told you this. My boss didn't sign off the references until half an hour before um, the end of day. So her boss, who also has to sign them off, didn't get a chance to. So they said, OK, everything's ready you'll just come in next week, we'll email you. And I didn't get an email. And I didn't get an email. And two weeks went on, no email. And I was emailing them and I was like, hey, can I come in and get it? Because uh, Thursday's the last working day. So I emailed them on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday and I was like, uh, these things, can I come and get them uh, tomorrow? And I just got like a noted, we'll keep you informed email, which is as close to saying F you in professional as you can possibly get. And I was like, um, but then I was going out with a friend the other day for lunch because she was leaving and on the way she, we were going to a mall that uh, was quite close to the school and she was like, oh, can we stop in the school? I've got to go to HR and sign for something. So she was getting her paperwork and other people had gotten their paperwork. And um, so I was like, yes, please. I need to go in and speak abruptly to HR. <laughs> I was actually very nice to them because... I get angry at HR, but it's not the fault of the workers there, you know? It, it's just how the school's set up, so they're doing what they're told, don't shoot the messenger, but also I need to have a serious conversation. So I went to HR, and I came in, and they were like, oh, Miss Milk, <laughs> that's her real name, Miss um, Milk, yes, I have it, uh, I have it here. And they didn't have everything, because... Um, my final exit can't be given to me yet for some reason. I don't actually know why, because I'm going... Um, you have 60 days to exit once you get it, so I don't know why they haven't given it to me. But apparently they're going to process it a little bit later. I'm guessing because they have to pay me. And one of the things you have to sign for is... Um, you have to sign to say, look, I've received my payment, I've received my papers, I've received whatever. And then they give it to you. So if it's not complete... I can't sign for that. So that's what I'm guessing is holding things up. And if they just said that to me, that would have been fine. But I get there and she goes, oh, here's your reference. And I thank you. I take it. I sign for it. And she's like, nothing else? Because I'm waiting on a professional development document uh, to show I did a course. And I said, no, that should be in here because the, the coordinator said, no, HR have it. And she was like, we'll have to check with that coordinator. And the problem is at this point, because they were so late giving it out and it's been a couple of weeks um everybody is traveling like there's nobody here to do anything which is especially irritating because when i got back in the car and we're checking these things i was reading through it again because i glanced over it to uh sign for it and i realized there was a mistake in my reference so they have like you know my name my role and the dates i work there and they've said she's been here for two years from 2019 to 2022 and that's three years, not two, because apparently these heads of schools can't count to three. And um, I just, <laughs> so irritated. So I messaged them right away and I was like, hey, I've noticed there's a mistake in this. And they sent an email back right away, you know, just uh, just saying, okay, would we confirm we've received this, we're going to look into it for you, you know. But there's really nothing they can do because the people who have to be physically here to sign these references are not here. Here. They have travelled. One's in South Africa, and I don't know where the other one is, but she's not in Saudi. So I'm just like, what 
what am I supposed to do now? And it's been really frustrating because I don't think there's a fix and they won't talk to me because I think they know there's not a fix and they don't want to have the conversation because there's literally no solution. And I'm going to leave before anyone gets back. So I don't know. I'm going to take the original with me and then maybe I can get them because I don't think they'll post it. I'll, I'll ask them to, but maybe I can get them to send me a scan and I can just have both together and I can, um, can print the scan and um, I'll keep the original and say, look, this is a printed of a digital document. Here it is. The original had this mistake in it, but, you know, they are the same. You can call and confirm. But it's just these things should have been done automatically. These aren't things I should chase. And my certificate for the course I took was not there either. And they were like, oh, well, we'll have to check. I think I just told you that. So I just don't trust that it's all going to be ready. And especially when they're like, oh yeah, uh, it, it'll be it'll be in August, right before. We'll leave you enough time to transfer your money out. So they'll probably do it a week before. And I'm like, but if these problems are still here, it might take more than a week to fix. <laughs> and it's just irritating because the plan was initially, um, I get paid my lump sum of everything, which I'm now not doing. I can't remember if I told you this or not. They're paying me monthly because I'm still here, which fair, you know, they have to take out my utilities, whatever. I think I did maybe tell you that. Uh, but the idea was I finish at school, I get all my money, I get all my paperwork and I just clean slate, st uh, clean slate, start fresh. This is how we're moving forward. And I just kind of can't do that when everything's still hanging on. And then they had the nerve. <laughs> oh, it was during a react. They had the nerve to message me and be like, oh, would you mind helping with the entrance exams this summer? Cause you're here. And I was like, sorry, I'm busy. Bye. <laughs> You, I'm not going to do extra for you when you can't do the bare minimum for me. That's not, that's not what we're doing. So, oh, it's been a very frustrating time. Other than that, I've been here. I've been uh, following the meal plan I made. I Actually, I've got a grocery haul. I was going to do like a separate vlog video, but maybe I'll put it in here. Hey teacups, what's brewing? A quick grocery haul for you because my delivery just arrived. I'm a little bit annoyed because I had planned to do a pasta bake and a Tuscan chicken recipe um, later this week and they haven't bought me spinach and they haven't bought me pasta. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of flour. I could maybe make some pasta, but probably it's just going to mean I have to get in the car and go to the local supermarket, which is what I was trying to avoid. So nice and happy about that. But for now, I'm just going to show you my groceries, do a quick haul, um, and we'll go through the cost because that's really what I'm doing it to try and keep track of everything. So let's have a look. Let's start over here. I've got my proteins for the week. Um, ground beef was on offer, so I got a couple of these things of ground beef, and I got about a pound of chicken breast. So I'm going to be having that. Um, I'm hoping actually in the tortillas I bought. I'm thinking lining a baking tray with tortillas, filling it with like a chicken mix and baking it. It'd be kind of baked quesadilla thing. We'll see. Got some cheese to that end. Um, bought a pack of eggs. I was going to get a massive pack, but I've still got a few of the eggs left from last time. I've got some yogurts for breakfast. Um, I do make my own oat topping for that, so I'm probably going to do that today. And some uh, cartons of sour cream. I can't remember the word for that. Tub is the word I was looking for. Um, I've got some cooking cream for the Tuscan chicken recipe I want to do. Oh, I've just thought. I may have double booked the chicken. Double booked is the wrong word there. But when I was counting on my meals, I bought the tortilla thinking I'd do it, like fill it with chicken and cheese like a baked quesadilla. But I was also going to do the Tuscan chicken. Hmm, I'll have to think about that. I've got the cooking cream that I can use for something else, but uh, the spinach hasn't turned up. So maybe I'll just switch and do the quesadilla instead. But I think when I bought the chicken, I was assigning it to two meals there. <laughs> Never mind, we move on. So I bought some flour and sugar because I was out and some sweetness for my coffee. Uh, I bought these little baking cups, but these are much, much smaller than the big ones I had. So they might be too small for my needs, but we will see. Moving on, I want to do an aubergine stir fry. Uh, I got a little bit more vinegar because I needed it for the stir fry and I'm nearly out of vinegar anyway. And I bought this, this is the most expensive thing I bought, 27 something SAR, which is ridiculous prices, but some sesame oil for that. 
and then some ginger and some chilies to go into that and into other things because generally it's quite delicious. Uh, I've already explained the tortillas. Let's move on to the vegetables. Strawberries were just on sale and they can get quite expensive, so I was happy to have them. I'm probably going to wash them in a very light uh, acid solution. <laughs> that sounds a bit weird. Uh, like just a vinegar wash. What I mean is I'm going to put a spoon of vinegar into some water and just lightly wash it, try and get any mold spores off the skin to help them last a bit longer. I heard that works, but I'll try it and see. Uh, we have courgette for my fritters. We have just some basics that I get most weeks. So we've got a fresh coriander bundle, some green pepper, some aubergine. Um, I have a few aubergine left from last week because I didn't have all the ingredients for the stir fry. But that's okay. I, I'm always up for roasting some aubergine. I've got some cauliflower. And then I've got more bananas because I think I might do a bit more baking. And under here somewhere I've got some potatoes. Because I'm thinking of making gnocchi? Gnocchi? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but whatever that is. Seems like something I'd uh, enjoy trying and I've never made it before so I'd give it a go. Oh, I did also get a couple of non-food um, items. I got some dishwasher liquid. I think I may have just said dishwasher liquid instead of um, liquid soap, but there we go. I got something else. What was it? Oh, the baking cups. They were also non-food. This is it all together. The total cost was 262 SAR. However, I will get a small refund for the pasta and for the spinach. So I'd say probably 255 SAR. I'm going to um, convert it on the screen somewhere for you because I'm not sure off the top of my head. Other than that, I've just been quite low key. I've been meal planning and um, ordering my food online because obviously the supermarket is gone. So the plan of attack with that is um, I want to see realistically how much I'm spending so I can estimate probably how much I'll spend in the next place. Um, it won't be exact, obviously, but I'm trying to look, okay, right now I'm not using convenience foods, I'm cooking all my own stuff, because I've got the time to do it. Probably I'd spend a little bit more on groceries there, because when I'm at work it's usually not realistic to say that I'll spend as much time doing things as I am now, but I'm filling time at the moment, I'm experimenting with recipes, lots of things like that, and that's fine. But um, by keeping track of how much I spend to do that, I can estimate kind of if I'm a little looser with myself, how much I can probably expect to spend. So it's all part of the budget planning. And I'm going to start probably doing budget videos on this channel for at least the first few months in the new place, because I want to um, I always wait and check and, and make sure when I move to a new place because you don't know how much things are going to cost and it's better to document it so you can really keep track on it when you first settle in. I'm going to be making a lot of one-off purchases that first month but it's okay I can account for that I've got like a lump sum put aside for that so um, it's important for me to kind of keep records at this particular moment. I did also just want to say thank you to everybody I put up on my community tab if any of you have questions about me working abroad. Now, obviously, I'm not going to tell you any uh, particular details in terms of where I am, any fine details, but in broad strokes, I can discuss it. And um, I know that people generally have been quite interested with uh, how I got into it and the details of how it works, because... Uh, it's a little less usual to see people doing this, um, maybe outside of the circle at least. So I know a lot of you had questions. Thank you so much for putting them down. Um, some of you put them in my other channel, some of, them, some of you put them here. That's absolutely fine. I've got, had a couple on Twitter. So I'm going to just keep a list of those questions. And I think I'm going to... Oh, cool. Sorry. Just got a message from my dad. <laughs> I'll deal with that in a minute. Uh, I think I'm going to, getting that message just completely wiped the slate of my mind clean. <laughs> I think I'm going to make probably a series. I was thinking about how long it would take to explain some of these things. So I might take some of these questions as kind of um, video titles and do a working abroad series and put it in that way. So thank you very much for those and I will do my best to make that. I probably won't start just yet, but it's something I'll do this summer. Okay, um, I'm going to just put a little bit of mascara on. 
tiny bit of eyeliner just on the top I think I usually wouldn't bother because it's just Ooh. pretend I didn't mess that up <laughs> I usually wouldn't bother when I'm just doing a lighter makeup look with any eyeliner but because my um my eyelashes are quite light on their own I like to just give myself a little bit more of a base I'm not going to put any in the bottom because some of it will transfer down anyway. Um, that that message I just got, sorry, when I was like, oh, good. My dad said that my card for my bank account had just come through. So one of the things I have to go home for is my card was expiring. And so I had to grab my new debit card before I, before I left. Otherwise, it was going to have to be posted. And um, I just didn't really want to deal with that. And then the danger of losing it in the post. So... It expired in August and I was expecting not to receive it till next month and I actually opened connected to the budgeting stuff I opened a couple of new accounts because I want to start separating off my money a little bit more and I'll talk about it more in the budgeting videos but um, I thought the new account card had come through and actually no it was the uh, it, it was my primary account so I don't have to worry about it not being here when I visit which is so nice I was going to go on to the online and just be like, hey, the, the tap on my card isn't working. Could I possibly have a replacement? Because if you request replacements, I think it's within the three months before it expires. They just update your card at the same time. And it's a good way to be like, OK, I don't have um, I don't need to freeze the account because I'm still in possession of the card. But could you please replace it, please? And thank you. And it looks like I'm not going to have to do that, which is really cool. All right. I'm going to get myself moving let's put a little bit of lipstick on first i do have a lot of lip balm on still so maybe it won't work i need ah i know let's put this one this is rosewood pearl by whoever do, maybelline the maybelline ones that look like this that have different colors on here really really nice i might potentially have a little bit too much uh lip balm on <laughs> but it's basically the colour of my lips, but it just uh, gives it a bit more of an even tone. All right, I'm going to get myself moving. Thank you so much for listening to the update. As ever, if you've got anything to say, comments are down below. And um, I've got seven hours of Chantel to watch. We'll see if it equals a reactor or we'll see if it's just all the same bullshit. <laughs> but other than that, I will see you another time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.